I'm talking about the, um, the Serbian army in this case. We just passed through a bunch of villages with that were majority uh, Serbian that got absolutely massacred. And to an, ex- like, to an extent, that was very much so true. But you cannot use that argument to now come to another Wonderful. village and say, oh, we get to do subscriber. it to them because they did it to us two fucking hours ago. If we did that, let's just, like, if that makes sense, for a standing army to do, or for a state, for any state to do, let's just throw nukes at each other, like immediately. Just wipe each other out because one nation at one point did something else to another nation. That's not how civilization is built, okay? That just, yeah, a tooth for a tooth. It's fucking stupid. It doesn't justify anything. About, uh, Let us continue very- the conversation about American perspective through this very interesting video from John the Duncan, a friend of the show. I believe he follows me on Twitter. This seemed like a very interesting conversation. Does intent matter in genocide? Where he will take apart some arguments that make my head shrivel every time I hear them. Okie dokie. Intent part. Yes, Yanagibashi SMH Yugo is a sem- champagne socialist now. Yeah, exactly. Fictional part of genocide. Sorry, I don't know the, that the, term. The, 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 I, think it's, I think it's called Dolo Specialis. It is the most important part of genocide, which is proving the special... Beautiful mods, please adjust the title kindly. Thank you very much. And add the link to this lovely, lovely creator. Does intent matter in genocide? Thank you very much. The most important part of genocide. Is, is it really the most important part? Or do you just not know what you're talking about? Please stop displaying your imbecility. Okay, I'm do sorry not, if you think do, the Declaration of the Judge is pu- imbecile. Don't put on public display that you're a moron. At least have the self-possession to shut up. So the role of special intent in relation to legally proving genocide has understandably come to the fore of public consciousness recently, as the Zionist entity occupying Palestine has perpetrated a series of deeply violent genocidal acts since October 7th. For many people, especially those like Destiny Bonici here, Mr. Borelli, I'm going to believe that's not controversial. Bernal, <laughs> genocidal Borelli, intent. Don't don't think the Israeli Minister Mr. of Finance Borelli, on the 8th of October Mr. war. Bernal, Wait, you do know how to pronounce my name. Are you mispronouncing it intentionally? Who wants to minimize and obscure the genocidal nature of the Israeli state and its current attacks. The concept of special intent, or dolus specialis, is a readily available tool. For uninformed Wikipedia warriors like Destiny, as well as more informed defenders of genocidal Israel, like the historian Benny Morris, seen here embarrassed, sitting next to Destiny, which... Feeling shame for a Zionist is hard, so a good job, Destiny, I guess. But for people like th- this, the simple story that the Genocide Convention innately requires the extremely high bar of special intent before something can be considered genocide is used as, an assen- as like essentially a means of genocide denial. This has a long history with others such as the legal scholar Gunter Louis having used a restrictive notion of special intent gape, Nick. to deny genocides of the First Nations people of Turtle Island, to deny the Armenian genocide, and even to deny that the murder of Roma peoples during the Nazi Holocaust should be considered genocidal. Because of this utilization of special intent to deny genocide, I wanted to do this brief video looking at specific legal theory of intent as part of the Genocide Convention. You know, is it the case, a case which, you know, I've, I've been guilty of um, perpetuating slightly myself, where there's a more expansive socio-historical understanding of genocide resting against uh, one single interpretation of a restricted legal case resting on, on special intent, where special intent is as Destiny likes to say here, the most important part of genocide. It is the most important part of genocide. Oh. Really <laughs> sort of socio-historical <laughs> views of genocide, which aren't oh. determined by a legal understanding, <laughs> but instead rest on oh. the wider work of oh. the originator of the term, Raphael Lemkin, and <laughs> much more, you know, much wider uh, sociological, historical, ge- critical genocidal studies work. And I don't want to imply here that we need to have a legitimate case in international law to invoke genocide. But rather, I want to make absolutely clear that when people like Destiny use their inexplicably large platforms to rattle off bullshit they've read from Wikipedia, their concern is not actually about understanding genocide or clarifying a specific context, but actually in obscuring an ongoing genocide in the name of a political project. And that's why I want to talk 
today a bit about the legal theory of genocide. Also, <laughs> for my own amusement, I kind of just do want to talk a bit about how Destiny has no idea what he's talking about. At least have the self-possession to shut up. Like, of, co of course he doesn't. He's not read anything. He's, he's read a tweet and a Wikipedia article about it and he barely grasps the concepts he's invoking. Which is, you know, extremely clear if you look at the rest of his understanding of, like, the legal case at the ICJ. Which either deliberately or just <laughs> confusedly misrepresents and misunderstands it. The court is not asked at this present phase of the proceedings to determine whether South Africa's allegations of genocide Didn't are well-founded. They're not uh, well-founded. They're not even well-founded. What? And it's also clear from this clip, it is the most important part of genocide, where he confidently asserts that the dollar specialis, uh, the special intent, is the most important part of genocide. Now, to state this as a fact reveals an absolute dearth of understanding of genocide, not just the socio-historically understandings that we've spoken about before, but legally too. You know, if you've been paying attention over the past months as the legal convention has been repeated in varying contexts, you might have noticed already that, quote, special intent or dollar specialis, these are not actually features of the genocide convention. It's not written there. Special intent is not written in the convention. It's not part of the law as written. However, the specific meaning and interpretation of intent has been a subject of intense disagreement since the very drafting of the convention. So it's this <clears throat> intent that it's now worth turning to. Not special intent, just intent. So as the specific nature of what intent means is not to be found in the actual text of the convention, judges, legal academics, and jurists have had to turn to other means to interpret the bounds of intent. For those like Destiny or Benny Morris and those who believe in dollar specialis, it is case law to which they turn to bolster their perspective. Now, it can be argued that the prevailing interpretation of the Genocide Convention through case Also, it can just be argued that it doesn't matter what, I mean, words matter and it matters what we call it, but giving more importance to what we call mass murder than the mass murder is just like insane westoid brain, right? Something horrible is happening over there, but we're sitting in our comfortable little rooms, completely devoid of it physically, and we argue about the specific terminology which is allowed to be used for this particular thing or not. Well, kids' limbs are being blown off. It's It's over-intellectualized, it's like fetishizing, over-intellectualizing uh, horrible crimes, right? It's, it's, if it's empty, it's like, it comes from a place of so much privilege. I don't know. It, it, it's sick. It's just sick. It's sick. Law is that it is understood as it's a game of semantic tag, exactly. Acquiring this special intent, which Destiny likes to point out, and that this has an extremely high bar to prove, as it often requires, like documents proving that a particular actor needed to act in a specific way and intended to act in a specific way, and they've written down that they are going to do it. Uh, and this is obviously very. He and it's using and it's using such a horrible event continuing event. It's not even just talking about history. It's talking about something that is currently happening so that you can win debates about what we get to call this horrible thing happening. That's mental illness. I'm sorry. That's not normal. That is not normal. You know how, like, divided from reality you need to be to do this? You, how much privilege you need to have to never have experienced anything even close to real violence in order for you to be able to, like, gamify it. They're gamifying horror. Fucking insane. All right, all right. All right fucking insane.
helpful. Uh, this restricted definition is obviously very helpful to powerful actors like Israel who want to have like a who have like a vested interest in making genocide very difficult to legally prove. But it's far from an uncontroversial position, and it's far from something. And that is all systematic as well, like people in the imperial core being completely divided, uh, like completely removed from uh, the very physical consequences of the actions of the imperial core itself, not being able to process the horror of it. You cannot, like you cannot, you cannot understand the horror of fucking limbs flying off of people five meters in front of you if you haven't experienced something even relatively similar to it. That is the only way you can engage in semantics like this with a, with a straight face, right? It's, it's, it's completely like, Wonderful. talk Have about living under a bell but on fucking steroids. And it's systematic because you want them to be removed. And there is a little platform called TikTok that kind of brought it, like it obviously it can't, but kind of brought it, not the platform itself, but the people posting on it and manipulating the algorithm in a positive way, I mean manipulating it. It kind of brought it relatively close to people understanding, holy shit, what the fuck is going on? Because they saw it so often on repeat, on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. And they were like, holy fucking shit, this world's fucking fucked. Let me do something about it, right? And what do they do immediately? They're like, no, 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 we got to ban this thing. It is literally allowing people to get closer to what reality in late-stage capitalism internationally and its consequences is. And we're immediately banning that. Thing which is settled within legal theory. So, for example, as one of the most well-known legal academic critics of special intent, Alexander Grimovolt, points out, if we follow a strict interpretation of special intent for genocide, then letters such as this extermination order from General German General Lothar von Trotha, it's like, imagine being a German called that, it's absurd. Um, <laughs> it's like being called Hans. Uh, this letter from, from Lothar von Trotha, which calls for the execution of all members of the Herero people on German-occupied Namibian land, might not actually be considered genocidal if we like have a very strict special intent interpretation of uh, the the convention. This is because the goal of the action, as the letter suggests, is not the not the intent to destroy the Herero people as such, but the expulsion of them from the land Germany is occupying, Namibian land. Now, obviously, to most right-minded people, that this would not con constitute genocide is patently absurd. And indeed, this evidence was enough for Germany, who paid $1.35 billion in restitution to Namibia for this genocide as a result of the UN's Whitaker report. So if this evidence can be interpreted as being both a smoking gun for special intent and directly in opposition to special intent, then what is revealed is not that special intent you know, doesn't exist within case law, but that it is not a consistently defined simple benchmark. It's not something that you can simply appeal to, something which constitutes, quote, the most important part of genocide, but is rather inconsistent and quite contested. And, and what should also be noted here, considering Germany's horrendous opposition to acknowledging genocide in Palestine and its crackdown on those people trying to support Palestinians, is the consistency between Lothar von Trotha's description and aims during the Herero genocide and Zionist aims in their genocide against Palestine. Another instance of the contested, politically dependent nature of the role of special intent when applied to different contexts. A second issue worth confronting is regard. But it's also like that—that's like their perfect smoking gun to use continuously because uh, it's the easiest one to manipulate. Like if you have half a brain and you're committing ethnic cleansing, just don't talk that you're committing. Don't say that you're committing ethnic cleansing, so that. All your fucking PR mouths, okay, fucking talking heads can just use it on repeat and recycle and recycle and recycle. It's it's a win-win. Regarding maybe the most well-known case law regarding special intent and... Yeah, it allows them to just justify it through bullshit because that bullshit is presented to them as a legal argument, even though, as we're seeing in the video, it's not really a legal argument even. Probably the most well-known case law regarding the Genocide Convention being applied. And that is the uh, jurisprudence of the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia regarding the Bosnian Genocide. Well, for many proponents of special intent, of the uh, high role of special intent in interpreting the Genocide Convention, people like people like uh, Gunter Louis, 
The case law from the Bosnian genocide simply demonstrates special intent. They argue that the decision to label the clearly demonstrable order, the written order to slaughter 8,000 military-aged Muslim Bosniak men as the only act of genocide presented during the ICTY, bolsters the idea of special intent. Intent to kill these men is clearly documented. But this isn't a case, not a simple case, of special intent being invoked and clearly defined precisely because the group being targeted in this specific case is not Muslim Bosniaks as such, but only those men of military age. This either implies that intent to destroy the Bosniak population is being expanded beyond just the demonstrable intent to destroy uh, a population in whole or in part, or the intent to destroy a population in whole and in part is being expanded to, to include this act which excluded uh, women and children. So intent is already being muddied. Or it's arguing that special Wonderful. intent... Exactly, that's what's soldiers, very often I mean, being subscriber. taught, like, specifically with the Bosnian case, um, you know, them targeting specifically uh, military-aged uh, men, the argument used to kind of spin it from uh, intent of genocide is saying, uh, hey, these guys would either participate or have already participated in uh, fighting our side in the war. Uh, they have simply removed the uniforms and now they're protecting Tending to be civilians, that is what allows us to kill them right now. Um, back then, we didn't have fancy terminology. I mean, it was used, but it wasn't in the mainstream, like terrorists, uh, militants, mass murderers, like we are positing towards the Palestinian resistance right now. But the approach is pretty much the same, but on steroids when it comes to Israel. Uh, back in the, in the Yugoslav wars, it was... Uh, directed at, you know, service age men. Yeah. Now the Israelis are saying children are Hamas, women are Hamas, men who have never fucking held a gun in their whole life, they are Hamas. It is picturing that the entire population is de facto militarized and de facto can at any moment become a militant. Uh, when you do that, you are basically approving any preemptive strike against absolutely any individual on that particular territory is not intent to mass murder or expunge from a particular area, but again, a preemptive strike stopping them from potentially doing something to you in the future, right? It's, again, just uh, sleazy little fucking ways for you to uh, to do what your original intent was, even though you haven't v voiced it, even though Israel has very much so voiced it, that you just want to fucking kill everybody in that particular piece of land. And is not essential to the understanding of genocide. But it gets more confusing. Because this is not the end of the matter for the Bosnian genocide and the legal rulings on it. While this one act was labelled genocidal and may imply an expansion of case law beyond narrow special intent, the ICJ... And yeah, exactly, actual veg, and let's not even start talking about the human shield rhetoric, uh, etc, etc. ...a in the ICTY invoked special intent in the judgment uh, as the reason... I mean, the same, like, again, the same arguments were used. When they were rolling into Srebrenica, they were like... We just passed through, I'm talking about the, um, the Serbian army in this case. We just passed through a bunch of villages with that were majority uh, Serbian that got absolutely massacred. And to an, ex like, to an extent, that was very much so true. But you cannot use that argument to now come to another Wonderful. village a and say, oh, we get to do subscriber. it to them because they did it to us two fucking hours ago. If we did that, let's just, like, if that makes sense, for a standing army to do, or for a state, for any state to do, let's just throw nukes at each other, like immediately. Just wipe each other out because one nation at one point did something else to another nation. That's not how civilization is built, okay? That just, yeah, a tooth for a tooth. It's fucking stupid. It doesn't justify anything. For excluding other larger scale massacres during the period being judged in this case. So what results from case law is not a simple dismissal of special intent, nor do we get a simple reinforcement. Instead, the case law has drawn distinctions that appear arbitrary, both as a matter of moral responsibility and of advice. Like if we use this rhetoric, the most fucked place on planet Earth, you know what it would be? Like, Jesus, we would nuke the shit out of these guys. I know a bunch of, I lived with a Mongolian for a, a couple of years. Bachka Bachulum, respect to you. I think he lives in Australia now. They would be so fucked. Like, if we could use the argument, hey, I got to do fucked up shit to you because your ancestors did shit to me. These beautiful people would be so fucking annihilated, God. 
Uh, there's a, there's how many? There's like two million Mongolians today, which always weirds me out. Four mil, three point three million. How the fuck are there only three point three million fucking Mongolians? It's absolutely wild. I don't know. Can't explain it. Advancing the values that the crime of genocide ostensibly embraces. In particular, the courts have struggled to maintain a coherent distinction between acts of so-called ethnic cleansing that rise to the level of genocide. Yeah, Hakim, but South African, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Who do black people get to genocide? What is our genocide free card? And beautifully put, I mean, horribly put, but you get my fucking point. Absolutely. Yeah, if we just went in that direction, then... And those that do not. But that's like the unironic use of October 7th. The unfortunate result. Even though, you know, you could... The perpetrators of October 7th can say, oh, we did it because of what happened to us previously, etc., etc. It's just a fucking eternal snake Alt doing is, what? That the law of genocide has often become a tool of atrocity denial. As with Serbia and Turkey, those seeking to deflect attention from past atrocities can and do invoke plausible legal arguments to counter accusations of genocide, happily shifting the conversation. This, again, should remind us of exactly what people like Destiny and Benny Morris are doing when they invoke and reify the role of special intent in understanding genocide. They are using contradictory, obscure case law to engage in genocide denial. They want to get into the obscure technical debates and move us away from talking about the actual genocide occurring in Palestine. And I wanted to make this video to help you watching notice that, to put a stop to it, and to continue to talk about the genocide on its own terms. And also to talk about how Destiny is a Wikipedia warrior who doesn't know what he's talking about and is seemingly motivated by a frothing hatred of Palestinians. Because, you know, it's nice to shit on assholes. I didn't like that turn of phrase. It's nice to shit on... It's nice to shit on Destiny. <laughs> so if case law can't be relied on to show the so-called most important feature of genocide, you know, special intent, can it be found in legal interpretations of the convention? So for decades now, legal theorists, uh, lawyers, and others have been pointing out that the special intent interpretation of genocide is not necessarily implied by the Genocide Convention, and nor should it be. To demonstrate this, many have made comparisons to domestic law, and indeed the drafters of the convention grappled with the comparison between homicide and genocide, and within that comparison is tricky legal philosophical conundrums about what constitutes intent or motive. Now, obviously there is a difference between genocide and homicide, that, and therefore the legal understanding of when each has occurred and intent and motive behind them differ. You know, you would have a hard time. Yeah, but like the, the reason, let's use, obviously there's a difference between murder and mass murder, but the only, like, you only need motive to prove that somebody has committed a murder if there's not enough other evidence. But if you walked into the room and the guy not only is standing next to a dot dead body covered in blood but holding a knife, but you enter the room and he turns around, takes another person, and then proceeds to stab them in front of the cop, you don't need motive. You arrest him and they go to jail. Again, allegory for what the Israelis are doing. They're not only, hey, look at what you did, but they're like, look at what you did and what you keep doing. Doing? We're not giving a fuck? Still? Pushing people into a territory you said you were not going to attack and that is a safe zone and then pushing them out of that same safe zone as well. You do not need intent when you can see it fucking happening. It's over-intellectualizing the simplest of fucking things. The oldest profession in the world. And no, it's not prostitution. It is the second oldest. The oldest is killing. I'm arguing that the state murder of one individual from a specific ethnic group would be genocidal. But regarding the notion of intent and drawing comparisons between domestic law and international law, there are helpful comparisons in showing how tricky the interpreting of the convention actually is. Authors like Barta, Finch and Stannard point out that to be found guilty of murder doesn't necessarily imply that you need to have shown that you've you know, left the note or that you've confessed to the murder, but that the jury can determine your guilt on a murder charge via intent and via showing a particular state of mind, which is demonstrated by your actions and by your behaviour and how you consider your actions to affect the world around you. Alexander Grimovalt 
essentially argued that the Genocide Convention should take a similar route to this, whereby through actions and wider evidence we can show that there is a genocidal state of mind producing genocidal actions. This is what is described by Grimwald as the standard of genocidal knowledge. In cases where a perpetrator is otherwise liable for a genocidal act, the requirement of genocidal intent should be satisfied if the perpetrator acted in furtherance of a campaign targeting members of a protected group and knew that the goal or manifest effect of the campaign was the destruction of the group in whole or in part. Drawing upon the Genocide Convention's core concern for the permanent loss of humanity that result from the annihilation of enumerated groups, this approach emphasises the destructive result of genocidal acts instead of the specific reasons that move particular individuals to perform such acts. By such standards as this, the legal case against Israel would be much more clear-cut. The conditions of genocide are playing out in front of all of our eyes. You know, intent or not, written down or not, it is there in front of us. Grumovalt doesn't claim that this interpretation is more obviously interpreted from the text of the Genocide Convention. The point is that the Convention could easily be interpreted in so many conflicting ways. But rather, this interpretation, which provides less, though not zero, role for intent, more effectively fulfills the spirit of the Convention while reconciling various critiques, including expansionist views of genocide. You know, people who say like, oh, anything could be genocidal now if you don't have intent. So, depending on how the long legal process against Israel works out, we may actually see case law veer more towards this view. And you know, there's other bits and pieces of evidence that can be included in this. You know, the, the, um, the Rome Statute, for example, includes a far more expansive view of uh, intent to prove genocide, uh, intent as part of genocide. And the Rome Statute is the, uh, is the international uh, legal covenant that uh, set up the International Criminal Court. A major thing, you would think, in understanding how uh, intent should be understood, but has been less influential, probably because of the role of law in relation to dominant power. And you can see just how inadequate the obsession with the logic of special intent is and how much more intuitive Grimovalt's interpretation is just by listening to Mr. Bocelli, Mr. Bonelli, Mr. Destiny. I don't know if it would have qualified as the crime of apartheid. Just like if Israel were to literally nuke the Gaza Strip and kill two million people, I don't know if that would qualify for the crime of In genocide. Your eyes like, this argument is patently absurd. The murder of two million Gazans, the entire population there, would absolutely fall within the interpretation of genocide. It would be the clear targeting, in whole or in part, of a national group which would have the clear effect of destroying <laughs> them as a national people, in whole or in part. Uh, you know, absurdities about proving special intent aside. Frankly, just like it's pretty clear that slaughtering tens of thousands of people, 40,000 people at least, which is probably lower than reality because we have got, we've lost the ability to understand how many people have been killed because Israel has so comprehensively destroyed the capability of Palestinian people to account for the dead. Both Destiny's hypothetical and the stone-cold horrendous reality clearly shows a genocidal state of mind, consistent with an alternative understanding of intent as understood as part of and emanating from the Genocide Convention and the spirit of the Convention. So, it's part and parcel of the logic of people who commit genocide to insist on special intent, as this very narrow We're understanding which is drawn from confused and contradictory case law and a very specific narrow legal interpretation of genocide is useful specifically to obscure intent. As one critic of Louis states, let's be clear, intentions are supremely important in the world's grim record of genocide, but not because they are recorded as intent to destroy. They matter least where they look like legally decisive smoking guns. They matter most because of all the ways they are disguised. Intentions were disguised by the perpetrators of atrocities to make sure they were not called to account and were disguised also to escape responsibility by those who should have called perpetrators to account. But that is only the beginning of the difficulties for a judicial criterion of criminal intent. Perpetrators and judicial authorities were able to disguise genocidal intentions from others most effectively where they were also disguised from themselves. By appeal to the exigencies of self-defence, by reference to the larger aims of colonisation and to explicit measures asserting benign intentions towards the indigenous peoples who nevertheless continued to disappear. Yet the importance of intent is still being implied even in the South African legal case. The legal team did a lot of work, you know, really good work in my opinion, demonstrating Israeli genocidal intent through different layers of... Yeah, you can, you can create 700 fucking different excuses of why you're doing something. Uh, but when it's so cut and dry, nobody should be having a conversation with the person, and in this case, the state which is actively still participating in something we can see with our very own eyes. The fact that we can even engage in this conversation or that we're engaging in it, when it comes to realpolitik, when it comes to the geopolitical situation, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is because there's a disbalance of power. And because Israel is the 51st state of the United States, they get to make points like this, and others are forced to listen to Israel's perspective and points 
on what is happening because they have more power. If any smaller, not in size, obviously, uh, we all know that the IDF uh, de facto is not very large in size, and I'm not just talking about their troop numbers. If any other state attempted to explain itself a way that is not directly tied to the world's only superpower, they will be told justifying, justifyingly that they are absolutely insane and nobody would listen to their arguments, right? But because of this power disbalance, because imperialism is a fucking thing, okay, we have to sit here and listen to excuses. And not only listen to them, but also listen to the president of the so-called free world, Joe Biden himself, say that what is happening in Gaza, which he did two days ago, I believe, does not constitute genocide. International law is Santa Claus for children. The only people who get to invoke any sorts of rules and regulations both domestically and abroad, are those who have the power to do so. Law, both international and domestic, does not apply to everyone equally. From something as simple as a speeding ticket, if you have a net worth of $10 million and you have a $5,000 speeding ticket, or if you have a net worth of $300 and a speeding ticket of 5000 bucks, your experience on how much the law can crack down on you is very different. Well, this same thing applies internationally. Israel is in a position where they can do unhinged, disgusting things without being directly called out because they can afford to. They're the millionaire who's speeding. But in this case, they're a state that's killing. Yes, yes. Israeli society, from politics to journalists to soldiers to just the general public, and did their best to show special intent because even with the contradictory and confused case law, it still remains a powerful interpretation of genocide. This, in my... The Sova tolerance. What I find interesting about the crimes that the prosecutor has issued the request for warrants against Tanyahu and Galantz are rather similar to the crimes that Radoslav Kerstich was found to be guilty of. Murder, extermination, persecution. Only genocide and forcible transfer are missing and forcible transfer should be easy to allege. Also, the combination of extermination persecution is something that usually, uh, that usually comes out when the charge of genocide is issued. Yep, pretty much. My view is frankly because the law is an expression of the hegemonic workings out of power. But what the South African case does show definitively in my view is that there is a genocidal state of mind and genocidal knowledge consistent with Grumovalt's interpretation of the convention. So Destiny doesn't know what he's talking about. Nobody, nobody should ever listen to him on anything. Never mind this. He has no idea he's read one Wikipedia article. I don't know why he would be given such a large platform on which he could demonstrate his complete lack of knowledge and understanding. Although, I guess, it is very funny that the... Because he's running a fucking cult and he's been running it for a very long time, uh, which allowed him to create a brainwashed mass that does his bidding and brainwashes anybody new who enters the community by making them feel like they're part of a community and by celebrating a deified individual who de facto knows better, understands better, and is better than anybody else. Again, textbook definition of a cult. That's why. But everybody, including Lex Friedman and so on, fucked up by giving him larger and larger platforms. And now he's the mainstream and now he's some big, powerful intellectual. We fucked up with Jordan Peterson. We fucked up with him. We'll fuck up with many, 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 many white boys in the future who pretend they know what the fuck they're talking about because they were right on three topics before in their life. People were just laughing at him the whole way through because he, he clearly didn't know what he was talking about. Like, even in this clip, it's very clear that Moon Rabini is just laughing at him here. <laughs> Which is, by the way, I think you guys, I don't know if you use the phrase, the dolo specialis, that the intentional part of genocide. Sorry, I don't know the, that the, term. The, the... Because he doesn't know. He's read, a, he's read a Wikipedia article. He's read a couple of tweets and he's, 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 he's shuffling through his papers as if he... Yeah, he's the king of the centrists. He's the overlord. He's like the, the god king, the emperor from Warhammer for centrists, okay? Has anything of relevance to say about anything besides gaming. Stick to your fucking gaming destiny. You're not a, you're not a fucking you're not a fucking real person. You've got nothing of relevance to say. Just stick to your gaming and shut the fuck up. 
Like, what? Sorry, no, I just, I just fucking, I just really fucking hate Destiny. And one day I think he's going to be embarrassed looking back at what he did during an unfolding genocide, which was shuffle papers and talk fast as if he has anything relevant to say to try and talk over people who have actual... No, he will not, because the only thing he cares about is being right. He, he like, you can see it as bright as day. He, he doesn't, he, he doesn't care about the points he's making. He only cares about being perceived as the smartest guy in the room. And with this sort of mentality, you will always go into being a contrarian on any taboo topic only so that he can, again, make himself feel like he's right. And how do you make yourself feel like you're very right? By thinking you're more right than others. And topics like this allow for this sort of snake eating its own ass um, ecosystem to develop in your own mind, which, you know. Some people would call being insane, but hey, I'm not a fucking psychologist. Relevance and expertise because of some frothing hatred he has of Palestinians. He's going to be ashamed and embarrassed of himself as he should. David Dodu, yeah, but ultimately he's not right. He, but what is being right? If, you're in, if you've built a community around yourself, in this case a cult, that is continuously telling you that you are right, then you are right. Because in his community he's right, so he's right internationally to almost everybody with uh, with half a conscious let's not even talk about half a brain he's not but he operates inside of his own community that he is growing and expanding so he's right he's right for himself when when truth is devoid of material reality which us marxists fucking harp on so hard for that particular reason then truth can be anything Fucking unicorns running running us as they breed with aliens and now they have horns on their heads and they're making the frogs gay. If your community, if your town, if your city, if your online community all believes that the unicorns fucking aliens and making the frogs gay is the truth, it's the truth. But if you want to talk about a material analysis, then obviously it's fucking up. But liberals do not care about material reality. They care about feelings, okay? Conservatives even more. And therefore, if they feel is the truth, then it's the truth. Especially when they throw more and more money at him, then it's not only uh, that you feel good about telling your own truth, King Yas, but you also get rich doing it. To be. He's, you know, playing, running cover for a genocide as it unfolds. It's a, it's a fucking low thing to do. Killer Queen, Poland, or PL, I don't know. He has a gamer brain. He treats political opinions like races in StarCraft. Some, uh, so whatever is meta in his mind, he will keep saying it. Exactly. He has a community that will keep telling him that he's the smartest boy. He's the smartest boy. He's turned this whole community basically into an allegory for his mother that gets to sit there and tell him that he's the smartest boy. You're the smartest boy. You're so special. You're the smartest boy. You're so special. The others don't understand you. The teacher isn't giving you bad grades because you, you're not studying or you're stupid. He hates you because you're the smartest boy. You're the smartest boy, please. And to do so so incompetently that everyone's just laughing at I'm you. Jealous of you, it's all conspiracy, exactly. Even the people on your side. Like to make Benny Morris feel shame is incredible. Just, I don't know, maybe quit your job. Get a, like, get a job working in a cafe or a shop or something. Maybe it's something that you could bring some joy to the world by making their coffee someday and not this bullshit fucking waste of waste of oxygen oh sorry yeah, i got carried away there he's so nice he's so nice like he wanted to like tell him to you know kos himself but he like he's too nice so he can't like he's like go go um go make coffee you motherfucker <laughs> i like him he's a nice person we don't deserve people like this <laughs> but just to clarify again, to get back on track, and contain my hatred, um, <laughs> interpreting intent within the genocide convention and through established case law is not as simple as people like Destiny and even like Benny Morris would have you believe. And 
I want to again clarify that we don't have to confine our understanding of genocide and what the most important part of genocide is to that which is laid out in the Genocide Convention. There are numerous reasons for this that I've spoken about several times in many different videos. But what I wanted to show you here... We can call it whatever. You call it cheeky breaky guys having some nice little fun time doing silly things by dropping bombies. Okay, call it that. Doesn't change what is happening. Doesn't change what is happening. History, law, is defined through the barrel of the gun, and they are keep fucking redefining it. Not even with guns, with fucking missiles. Was that even if we confine ourselves to the law, the idea of genocide always. and its alleged associate re associated requirement for special intent is an uncomplicated, settled matter, is an obscurant oversimplification. The claim that it is the most important part of genocide is frankly, flatly untrue despite what Wikipedia warriors like Destiny might spew out on their inexplicably large platforms. And there is, like, I'm not a fucking psychologist, but there's another aspect to this. When, I guess, that I just thought of. When when your whole life is talking, when your whole life is, like, talking, yeah, that's it. When your whole life is talking, then you give even more emphasis on what people say instead of what people do. So for you, intent is so important because you identify action through what people say they will do, not the action that they execute itself, right? So it's genocide only if they say they are doing genocide because what you say is who you are to a Twitch streamer whose whole life is talking into a microphone. Ironic that I'm saying this, but you get my fucking point. Special intent is not a simple, undisputed benchmark which must be reached before we can call something genocidal by law. It is, in fact, more complicated than the Wikipedia summary he read. And the only reason to steadfastly stick to this idea is to deny the ongoing genocide in Gaza. And despite the fact that technically there is no legal ranking of genocide as a worse crime against humanity than others, excluding uh, the possibility of genocide like this is an attempt to move the genocidal acts of the Zionist entity closer to innocence to effectively deny the genocide and it is de facto genocide denial exactly bingo fucking all the bells are ringing right, which except in destiny's head <laughs> is in effect to work complicitly with it to reiterate zionism is settler colonialism settler colonialism is genocidal to free palestine from genocide defined beyond the law requires the liberation of all the land from the jordan river to the mediterranean sea all right thanks for watching um this was a shorter video today, but uh, thanks for watching it through. This was uh, a shorter video, fucking king. Go and subscribe to John the Duncan. Make great videos like this one. Thank you very much, John the Duncan. Thank you very much.